So this is Quake 2, the uh, newer, well, the, one of the more fun games, I should say. No bait, seriously. Um, crap. Movement is pretty similar to Quake um, 2, or 1, except that there is no air control, which means if you're in the air, you cannot turn, or you can't really you can't really adjust where you're going. You can it's very slightly. It's kind of like uh, playing Halo. When you're in the air, you can kind of like hover in another direction. Um, so basically, some of the very long jumps we're going to do, um, we're basically just flinging ourselves in that direction. Um, some of you might be familiar with some of the older um, segmented runs on SDA, um, but in the, in the current um, single segment in RTA is where a lot of the, uh, the development has been going. So you might be wondering, like, how did I just fly off a barrel right there? Um, that was actually a double jump. Oh, blew into a laser. Great job. Just touch the laser again. <laughs> I might be wondering, that's, it's a double jump combined with a barrel explosion. Um, you can object boost off of barrels in this game, basically jumping and then jumping again and uh, linking successive jumps. You can get some pretty crazy height and also some pretty extreme speed that way. And then if you combine that with the exploding barrel, uh, you can get some pretty extreme height. Um, so yeah. In terms of development, in the past in the past year or so, this game has gone from about a 26-minute run um, to about a 22-minute, 30-minute run um, using just new strats and new routing. Um, the main guy behind that is a guy named uh, Adam753 or Adam underscore 753. Um, there's also been some new routing done by a guy named Straightburn, so I'd recommend checking him out. Okay, we're kind of low on health. Let's see if we can get through the spot. Uh, we have to do some successive grenade jumps in the coming section, so it helps to have um, enough health, basically, to survive them. Can't see the grenade. Got it, sweet. Um, so you saw I just pulled out the stun gun and shot three times. The reason we do that is because um, using the grenade ticking sound effect is pretty inconsistent because sometimes the grenade will tick three times, sometimes it'll tick four times before exploding. So it's, it's kind of um, difficult to time just by sound. So we use the stun gun. Um, the skip coming up is actually made, it was popularized by a guy named Xcrem, I we believe, or I believe. Um, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be just doing a quad damage grenade grenade jump. And this wouldn't have been possible if he didn't figure out how, that we really need armor to do it. Because before that it was basically TAS only. And this is one part why it's important to have enough health because we're going to be doing two successive grenade jumps. Cool. The reason I, I'm killing this dog right here is because if I fail the jump and I reload, the time spent reloading will allow the dog to get behind me and take some health away from me, so it's kind of just a safety strat. So the skip coming up, basically what we're going to be doing is going to throw some ammo boxes on the door and that will stop it just long enough to get out. Um, if ammo boxes, if they take damage, they'll actually explode. So while they will stop the door, they'll only, they'll only stop it long enough for them to explode. And sometimes that dog will run under the door, so it's, sometimes it's not even necessary. Um, if you're interested about the engine I'm using, this I'm actually using a source port. It's called QT Pro. Um, it offers some pretty significant advantages over using the vanilla engine for Quake 2. Um, basically, instant, instant loading, instant quick saving, reloading, um, which allows basically doing some very hard, very uh, difficult strats. Um, so basically being allowed to repeat them is pretty valuable. Forgot to shoot that guy. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, you'll notice I might be quick saving a lot. There's uh, more than a few locations where if I would fall off a bridge or something, it would cost, you know, upwards of 20 seconds just to get back on route, so it's just easier to save in case I mess that up. Um, this coming up, it's a little bit, it's a newish tech. Um, I started doing this on my own, and then I, uh, Adam underscore 753 picked it up at some point. Um, he actually turned in the form it is now. I, I would usually push these barrels that I'm about to jump off of. I'll try it again. There we go. Um, as you can see, um, like other Quake games, the combat is purely optional. Um, thank you to John Carmack for adding that feature to this game. Um, we're just going to be doing a lot of crowd surfing here and there. What you just saw is me using the shotgun's knockback ability to launch that huge strog upwards, and I just crawled underneath it. So the developers really encouraged um, creative use of weapons to not actually do any fighting. Um, of course, I'm just clearing some sections out just to make it easier to get through. Um, let's see, this guy's kind of problematic, but thanks to the super shotgun, we can just push him out of the way. Um, you could probably do a donation comment really quick. Awesome. Uh, I have $100 from Peter saying, Hi, Ken, from Mom and Dad. Well, as $3 from Nicholas, it's a great thing you're doing for charity. Been watching HQ for ever since 2013. Haven't looked uh, hooked ever since. Crit Mine is a godly speedrunner. I can't wait to watch this Quake 2 run. Good luck with the run, and together we'll beat cancer. Thank you. Based. I also have 25 from John T. My stepdad passed away a year ago today from cancer. Great to see you guys giving back. Also, thank you for the $25, Connor, too. Hi, guys. Thanks for you setting up an awesome event for a great cause. Two years ago, I was diagnosed with leukemia. It's people like you and those who donated, which helps kick cancer's ass. Thank you. You guys are lifesavers. Life from the, or love from the UK. One thing you might notice about this game, well, I surely do, is it's very snaggy, which means a lot of the uh, map geometry is going to grab you, like, you know, lots of sharp edges. They really like to use their, you know, blocks. They really wanted to make it uh, high, how should I say, high poly count for its time. And I guess it is, but it kind of works against you. You're always getting snagged on, like, corners and stuff. So if you ever thought about speedrunning this game, um, not getting snagged is one important part of speedrunning this game. <laughs> Um, you might be noticing why like, I just get these random super bounces, because certain parts of the game um, adds in like this shaky random, this random shakiness. So basically, it just makes the character shake or bump in like some random direction, and, and sometimes that matches up with the direction you're moving, and you just do like a super jump. Okay. Okay, let's see if I can get this jump. Oh well, that was pretty good. It's always nice to get that jump. Sometimes you just fall into the lava though. And you're like, okay, that was silly. Um, the strat coming up is some newer tech popularized by uh, Adam underscore 753. Basically, I'm just gonna be doing a quad damage rocket jump through a hole in the ceiling. And uh, getting it lined up is pretty finicky, so let's see if I can pull it off. That's, that's all right, let's try that. Let me see, let's go down. There we go. So like, what, three, four tries? Not bad. Um, you basically have to get the right angle, you have to be standing in the right spot, and you have to be pointing at exactly the right orientation. Um, it saves, I would say, about 20 to 30 seconds. 
and the skip used before that one was popularized um, was even less consistent. So kind of one of the, I would say one of the most finny skips in the game. Um, that one, what we just did is the fan skip. Um, that can be kind of finicky, although I traditionally haven't had much problems with it. Oh, just fell into the lava. Great job. <laughs> All right, so just a simple rocket jump. And let's see if I can get it. There we go. I had to turn to the left there for... Basically, this game doesn't let you aim straight down. Um, when you have pretty much any gun out, um, you're going to aim slightly not all the way down. So if I was aiming completely at the wall, I would have uh, rocket jumped away from the wall and I wouldn't be able to make that jump. So that's why we turn a little bit, just so we can get onto the lip of that, that floor, whatever. So yeah, just a lot more, lot more crowd surfing here. Um, you'd think that we would be doing a lot more bunny hopping, it's just that the quarter, most of the quarters in this game are very short, so you're going to be able to jump like once or twice, and uh, you hit a wall. So um, This track coming up, this is uh, another piece of tech that uh, Adam753 popularized for me, personally. Um, we're going to be using an invulnerability and a rocket jump, and, or a quad damage. And then we're just gonna, it basically saves about 10 seconds. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Let's see if I can get it. Of course, getting over there is a lot harder than some other things. There we go. So this guy has a quad damage we need, so we're gonna go ahead and grab that. And then another, this is another section where they decide to add that random shakiness. So if you were to go through here um, without killing those guys, you'd probably fall off the bridge. It's kind of annoying, but... Kind of like a little fun thing runners do is trying to get that adrenaline before the uh, level ends, and I got it, so that's cool. Uh, let me think, what's coming up? Uh, nothing too insane, so go ahead and do some donation comments. Great. I have $60 from Whiskey. That Dark Forces 2 run was awesome. Loving the stream as always. Keep up the great work, guys. $50 from Nick. Just got off work and wanted to donate more. Thank you very much. $50 from uh, Dascuro. Greetings from Mexico. Donate again. Glad you guys keep this up year after year. Boss and Dad just cancer six years ago, so this means it's great. You all do this for such uh, for such a cause. And of course, hype, hype, hype. Absolutely. Also, just a quick reminder, there is a new donation incentive up uh, for Pokemon Plays Twitch Part 2. If the task bot blew your mind earlier in the week, it has one more amazing trick up its sleeve. Using the power of the Twitch chat, a Super Nintendo will do something you never thought was possible and might change your life, for you, might change your life forever. Be a part of history as an old console attempts to take over the known universe. 30,000 for that, it's on the very last day. So what I'm about to do here is, I'm hitting the switch which raises the platform, but there's a little rocket jump that's possible here, and it's, it's just not that consistent. So I'm just, this time I'm just going to wait for the platform. It's a pretty hard rocket jump. Am I going to make the cycle? Nope, didn't make it. That's alright. Um, let me think. Coming up, well, let me see. We're about to go to a level end. So I'm not exactly sure. And you get the see the whole level and look through a wall. Or can you? Huh. Usually it, uh, the camera moves right when you go to that end screen and it'll show you like the whole level like poking through a wall. It's, it's kind of interesting. Um, but that time it didn't happen, so... One of the advantages um, about this engine is that it skips cutscenes in between units. Um, it actually just doesn't load them at all. So, but, you know, it's fast. So, actually, after this run, I'm going to load up the vanilla engine and I'm going to show you guys the ending cutscene just for fun. All 
There we go. So this guy, this big guy in front of me is pretty problematic because uh, he blocks up hallways, and right now they're just having like a little duel. Cool. Yeah, the one, one interesting thing about the AI is that um, they can actually turn on each other. Like they can just, if one of them accidentally shoots one, another one, then they'll just uh, start fighting each other. Uh, this skip coming up, what we're actually doing is we're hitting a level trigger, a loading trigger. It's a volume sticking out of the ceiling, and what it does is it triggers the, this door in front of me to blow up, and it'll let me out of the level. Okay, and I always, I always jump on that ledge just, just so I can make it a little bit more consistent. Uh, normally, you'd have to go into another room, activate a gun, the gun will shoot a reactor core, and then you, then you can leave the level, but... Um, Somebody found that trigger sticking out of the ceiling, and that's basically how we've solved that level now. They have, uh, Quake 2 has these interesting concepts of boss fights, but uh, if you, you know, do your homework and look for some quad damages, they're not really uh, that difficult at all. Thanks, John Carmack. Let me think. Yeah, um, the level coming up, I think it's the torture chambers. Um, nothing really insane there, just a lot of crowd surfing, so go ahead and do some donations. Great, I have $25 from Diago. Hello from Portugal. I wanted to donate last year but didn't have the money, but this year I felt like I had to since my dad died in October to kidney and bone cancer. Hope this money helps another mom and dad. Great cause to keep up the awesome work. Best regards. And then, $45 from our very own Niglaria. Go fast! On behalf of the F-Zero <laughs> crew, runner's choice. Based Niglaria. I'd also like to remind everybody, we are also sponsored by Humble Bundle. Check out the awesome Games Done Quick bundle on Humble.com. Pay what you want for up to nine games, a Twitch Turbo subscription, a subscription to XSplit Premium, and exclusive merchandise, all while supporting Prevent Cancer Foundation. That's what. Uh, that's at www.humblebundle.com. This bridge here, for some reason, they decided to make it have like ice physics, so it's very easy to just like slip off and fall into a pool of acid. So, just a little tip, speed tip. It's funny, after, for some reason, I, like, this mission objective is to take the commander's head, and the commander's, like, already dead when you get in there, and not really, I don't really remember why that's so, but maybe there's some lore behind that. Who knows? Oh, come on. And as soon as you take the head, it, like, sounds an alarm, and allegedly the AI get kind of more uppity, but, you know, it doesn't really make a difference, because you're just going to run around them anyways. Okay, so there's going to be a jump coming up. Um, it's kind of tech that I usually do. There is uh, an easier strat, so let's hope we can get it first try. Otherwise, I'm going to do a different strat. Let me see. Okay. All right, this is the jump. Let's see if I can do this pretty easily. Just gotta wait for the blocks. Hope this flyer doesn't get me. No, I didn't get it. I'll try it one more time. No. There we go. Yeah, usually you can um, you can jump from that block and go all the way over there, but there's all this stuff hanging in the way. It's very easy to bump into stuff. Like the strog that just like to hang around your head. Oh, okay. So I got about nine seconds to get to the next jump. Let's hope I can get it. Two, one. No, I didn't get it. Um, crap. 
Yeah, basically, if you use if you use the quad damage over there, um, you have to get you have to very quickly get to the end because uh, um, quad damages they are budgeted, so there aren't really many that you can pick up later on. So you need to get to the end of this little level very quickly to do another rocket jump very quickly. And if you run out of time, well. Uh, Alright, let's we got time, there we go. And there we go. So kinda bad, but we got it. So the objective here is to blow up the computers. Um, normally the game would want you to, to go all the way around very long level, do some backtracking, but we're just going to throw some grenades through the window. It's very important not to fall in that pool of water there, because for some reason it does not let you get out. No idea why. Let me see. Yeah, go ahead and do some donations. Great. I have uh, $50 from Pokemon watching this Dark Souls 2, Quake 2, DN 3D. This is my <laughs> this is my adolescence in gaming and great fun to watch. Keep up the good work for the good cause. Point out from Iron Hand. I've donated forward to try and help find a cure for my mother's lymphoma. She passed away August 6th of 2014. And now I donate to find a cure for someone else's mother or father. Thank you very much. 50 from King of Moths. Loving the PC segment and the mind-blowing plays being made by the runners. Keep up the good work. Also, if you're looking for something to bid towards, we still have a couple bid wars going on. They're nearby. Uh, there's the character bid war for Metal Slug Advance. Uh, Tyra, most recently, is reading by, winning by 146, over 126 to Walter's $20 difference. You can choose, maybe one donation, to see who plays in Metal Slug Advance. As well as the River City Ransom, uh, the 100% save girlfriend versus 80% don't save girlfriend. Uh, save girlfriend is winning by uh, about a little over $700. So if you really want to not save that girlfriend, you're going to have to pay up. But good news, it's for a good cause. So the interesting thing about that gate I just jumped through, um, one thing, if you land on the bridge right before it, the, bl the bridge is triggered to collapse. And for some reason, um, that, uh, that bridge will actually eat all of your inputs. So if you land on the bridge, you'll fall right into like a pit of acid. Um, secondly, if you don't go through the gate fast enough, um, as soon as the gate closes, it'll teleport you right outside the gate and drop you into a pit of acid. So uh, it's, always a fun, it's always a fun skip to do. Oh, nice job. So we're actually heading into the, the final units of this game. Um, we're going to see a little few more rocket jumps here and there. Basically some backtracking. Um, it's important, um, especially towards the end of the game, to budget your health pretty, or at least just be careful enough to not take too many hits. Um, we do need to do some rocket jumps, and if we don't have enough health, then we probably won't be able to do all of them. Um, the reason I'm clearing out this section up here is because um, we need to go up the elevator and then come back down, and the AI has a tendency to clog this elevator. We'll just like stand underneath it and it'll just keep going up and down, up and down forever until they die. Let's hope I can get this guy. I got him, sweet. There is an alternate uh, route to get to uh, the objective here. Um, I mean, it's been timed, it saves. There's like a, a half second difference between taking one or the other. Also, uh, shout outs to my boy Lurk. Um, he couldn't make it. He just has a hard job. So, shout outs to him. Um, shout outs to Skeleton Bill. 
Oh, this is where I usually do this. Yeah, these floating red dudes, they're, they can really eat up some health very quickly if you're not too careful. Grenade jump. Do I have enough health to do it? I think we can do another one. Um, this rocket jump saves about 10 seconds. Got it. Sweet. Um, so we just got to press a button up here, and then we will be about two level changes away from the final boss. As I said earlier, yeah, it's really easy to get like snagged on corners and stuff. Lots of fun. Shoutouts to Pykin, who couldn't be here because he's playing Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> cool. So there's like a little sequence there where the door slowly, slowly destroys itself. And we're just gonna go grab some health. Cool. That rocket jump saves about like four or five seconds. And even if you get that little platforming section very smoothly, you still have to wait for the elevator. <laughs> Um, little, tiny little bit of platforming here. It's kind of tricky, but you just gotta wait for it. Even if you hit the button, the uh, lasers take about a second to turn off, so you can still hit the button and go right into the lasers. So, in about 30 seconds, time is coming up, so get those fingers ready. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Cool. And time. Thank you very much. And then I'm just going to show off the uh, ending cutscene if it works. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, for some reason the saves don't always try. Actually, it might still work. Let me try that again. The quick saves don't sometimes don't always transfer over. Let's try that. There we go. We're, we're going to show off the final cutscene. Lovely 90s CGI. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was quick 